What's going on, everybody? It's Jeff here. Welcome back to the channel. All right, guys, a lot of economic data was just released this morning, and there are two key metrics that are going to give us a roadmap of exactly where the market is headed for the main reason that today, quarter two ends, and the companies are going to start reporting their earnings over the next few weeks. And we know that companies reporting strong earnings, strong growth, and positive outlook in the future is what is going to propel this market forward. So in this video, I wanna go over those two key metrics. I'm gonna break everything down for you to give you a good idea and prepare for the coming months ahead. So let's get right into it. First off, the Fed's preferred inflation gauge, the PCE was released today, very similar to the CPI. It's just weighted a little bit differently. It's, like I said, very similar. The inflation gauge remained high, but showed glimmers of moderation in May. Obviously, gas and energy are leading that number to be a little bit higher. This one thing I'm going to read in a moment really stuck out to me, and it really coincides with that second metric. So the Fed fears that if businesses and employees begin to expect higher future prices and change their behavior, which is their spending behavior, negotiating higher wages and passing along cost increases more readily inflation might become a more permanent feature of the economy backdrop. So we have gone from inflation's not a problem to inflation's transitory. So inflation's a problem, but we're going to get it down to 2%. Then just recently, Jerome Powell had stated that rising interest rates is not going to help fight inflation to now potentially inflation is really here to stay and it's just become a permanent feature of the economy backdrop. So keep that in mind over the next coming months, especially as CP the next CPI is set to be released in just a couple of weeks. Let's get into that second metric. So personal income and personal spending was released today. Personal income a little bit higher than the consensus, which generally you would see as a positive thing that people are making a little bit more money, giving them more money to spend. However, personal spending was about half of the consensus. So to break this down for you, and then I'm going to talk about why it is 100% relevant to the stock market, especially because you, you look at some of these com uh, comments and you see, oh, calls that open, the market's going to rip, which we'll talk about the market in just a moment as of today. But let me break this down for you. When you have a bundle of normal goods, everyday goods that everyday Americans purchase on the regular, and you have the cost of goods staying neutral, and when your personal spending goes down just a little bit, therefore the gap is not very much. However, when you have those same cost of goods now affected by inflation, which means for the same amount of products or goods, like I just mentioned, is actually higher and you have personal spending, which should be higher to meet that supply, it's actually lower, that gap is much greater. So how does this affect the entire market? Well, it goes back to what I just said about earnings. You have companies set to report earnings on quarter two over the next coming weeks. We watched quarter four struggle a little bit, and we watched quarter one even struggle more. Companies were starting to change some of their guidance. Guidance is also their future outlook. Investors don't just want to know what exactly was delivered last quarter. They want to know what you're going to be able to do in the future. How are the supply chains affecting you? Okay. How is the labor force, you know, shortage in some areas affecting you as well? What are you going to be able to do for us? And when you're starting to see this spending going down, it's a very good indication that some of these numbers are going to come in a little bit shy. And on top of that, some of their guidance is going to be shy as well. Also keep this in mind. Elon Musk had stated that he was going to do a 10% layoff. This is Elon Musk, okay? And I know he can be a little bit wild. I understand people have their personal opinions about him. But overseeing a company as big as Tesla saying, listen, we need to start laying off our workforce is really kind of an indication that we're going to see sales slow a little bit, growth slow a little bit. How is the supply chain affecting them? Although they've been, been able to maneuver a little bit, but like I said, it's a good indication on what potentially could come for earnings. And if earnings are bad, you know, not only does the entire sector get pulled down, when you see big companies like Apple, Facebook, Netflix, Tesla, okay, NVIDIA, AMD, and so forth, they're going to weigh down the entire market. Also, one last point to this, and I, I noticed the other day, and maybe it's just me, maybe it's just some of the items I'm looking at. There's actually twofold. A couple of the items that I have saved in my cart on Amazon or ones that I've looked at, but I'm trying to do reviews. I've gone back and I've seen the price higher 
not many, but it's been a few. And I'm like, you know what? Inflation's hitting across the board. They probably got, you know, a new inventory into, you know, Amazon's fulfillment areas, the warehouses, and they're charging a little bit more. But I've also seen a lot of discounts on Amazon. And I, I bought my son a new, a new bike a few weeks ago. I bought a couple other things. I've been looking around and I'm just seeing that, that little red that says negative 8%, negative, you know, or, uh, you know, 8% off or, you know, 16% off or 37% off or whatever it is. And I'm starting to see it a little bit more. And I've been also reading other reports that, you know, wholesale inventories are up a little bit higher because a lot of these companies saw a massive demand and a nonstop demand also battling a shortage. So therefore, when they were able to lock in some of these deals, they were able to get some of these orders to come in. They really wanted to load up their inventory, not to mention they might have ordered, you know, Target might have ordered a thousand TVs but only 500 were delivered and they ordered another thousand, but only 500 were delivered. Well, now some of that surplus is being met. Okay. And they're having, like I said, a surplus of inventory. So here's another indication. It's an article that just came out a couple of days ago. Retails tell their customers to keep their returns. Now, this is not something that is, you know, completely out of the ordinary. I've seen it on Amazon, especially when it is a product that might weigh a few pounds and it's a very low ticket item, but just 10 or $12. Amazon will actually say, Hey, listen, instead of, you know, us paying for, you know, the return because they do you want and, and giving you a, you know, a credit, a financial credit, monetary credit. Do you want to be able to switch this out for a new product? Sometimes you do it. Sometimes you might say no, you say no. And then say, listen, just keep the product because you know, so forth. It's a low ticket item. And you've seen that, but retail stores, you really don't see that as much. Okay. And while you might have some of your pains might have happened to you, I understand that I have heard from others that has happened as well. But reading from you know, or go, judging from the data that I've read, this doesn't happen very often. And they're doing it because they literally cannot store they don't have the warehouses to be able to store this inventory, and they still have shipments that are coming in that they can't turn down because they ordered this three, four, five, six months ago. All right. And there was such a lead time that they're coming in. So all of this is starting to form a potential for a bigger disaster when it comes to future sales. And I'm really interested to see exactly what happens with Amazon. Are companies going to start and analysts start coming out saying, listen, we gave this guidance a very positive, you know, last quarter, or we gave this guidance that was maybe just, you know, 2% loss, 3% loss. Well, we're actually going to increase it because we actually see a 6 7% loss. And they do this in order to help protect their, their stock from getting smashed all at once when they finally release their earnings. Overall, when these earnings are released, if they are poor, they are going to bring down the market. Now, right now, you are seeing the market bounce off of 373, getting up to that 380 area. Is it going to close a little bit higher than that? It's actually twofold. I mentioned this probably pretty much a month ago to the date. I had said they're always looking to close this monthly candle. And last month, we had a massive rally towards the end to get that doji candle, which is a really good indication of a potential reversal. Clearly, it did not play out to the upside, but they're trying to close some of this red as well as the end of the quarter. You have, you know, 401k reports that are going to be re released. And a lot of people that are seeing some of these losses inside their retirement funds, it might get to a point where they're like, listen, I can't take any more bleeding. You know, I might have already lost 100 grand, 200 grand, 300 grand, especially for those that are going to be retiring over the next, you know, five to 10 years. And I, I want to get that money back. However, I definitely cannot afford to lose any more money going forward. So if you do start to see that, which is why I see, I think we are seeing a little bit of a, a rally. You know, we talked about these relief rallies as well. I'd said this just a couple of days ago in a video I made that, listen, you're seeing this massive bounce to the upside. Everybody on Twitter was bullish. And, you know, here we are clearly down, you know, 20 points down to a total of uh, reached uh, 26 points to the downside. But like I said, just keep that in mind going forward. I am looking to slowly start building some longer term positions. Amazon is one that is sticking out to me. It has a very, very solid support at that $100 level. I do want to see what they report for earnings, okay, and what their guidance is going to be because they've already said that, listen, from a warehouse side, they've slowed down some of their expansion because they are seeing less demand from consumers. So I am looking at that, but the big picture behind all of this is I would rather be a little bit early and dollar cost average into my long-term portfolio, then be late. Rarely are you ever going to be able to time the bottom. You're going to be able to hit it. Sometimes at base, sometimes, you know, the Fed might get involved. 
something might happen to where it's a V-shaped recovery and you know, you've already missed some of that. So I'd rather be just a little bit early, all right, and do this the right way, the smart way, especially because I have a little bit more capital, okay, than I did obviously back in 2020 and even before that. So that's it for this video, guys. I'll see you in the next one.